Group leaders, welcome to week chapter three, not week chapter three, it's week three. What are you talking about, Daryl? Welcome to week three, Revelation chapter seven, nine through 17. Uh, this is another wonderful glimpse uh, that John has given in heaven where we see uh, when John opens his eyes to this vision that he's given, he sees a multitude of worshipers and he says there are too many to count. Uh, there are so many people in heaven rejoicing. There are so many people in heaven worshiping the Lord. And he says they're all, they all look different than he does. Uh, there's folks from every tribe, every tongue, every people group, every nation, uh, which is giving testament to the promise of God that was made so much in the Old Testament, made manifest in Jesus himself, uh, and is now being uh, cashed in here in heaven, uh, that that the message of the gospel will go out to all the ends of the world. Uh, the book of Habakkuk tells us uh, that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the seas. Uh, and this is what we're seeing. Uh, Christianity, remember, has no geographical center. It has no political center. When you think of Islam, you think of the Middle East. When you think of Hinduism, you think of uh, India. When you think of Buddhism, you think of Asia. Uh, Christianity is global. Uh, and that is the beauty of what John is wanting us to see here is that heaven is going to be full of people who don't look like us. Uh, and that's a good thing. And so uh, it has citizens from all over the globe. So a few things we want to uh, maybe lead our folks in this week is how would you explain the presence uh, of all these different types of people? What does that say about Christianity and its spread uh, according to this passage? How does this passage encourage you? Uh, to engage with those in other walks of life? Uh, how does this passage move you to engage with people who believe differently than you do? Um, and I, I would also say, please be careful with that question uh, because we don't want to shame folks who aren't doing this. Because remember, evangelism is hard. Uh, evangelism is tough. Uh, breaking out of your comfort zone is tough. Folks are going to be introverted. That's hard already. Folks are going to be too extroverted and they don't listen. Uh, you're going to have folks who work in office settings in which they uh, engage with people all day. You're going to have folks who work remotely who don't engage with folks other than via video. And there's not an opportunity for that. You're going to have stay at home parents in your group who only talk to other moms because that's all that they're able to do right now. And so you want to be careful uh, to not just be like, hey, you have to go share the gospel. Uh, we certainly want people sharing the gospel. We certainly want and engaging with folks from different walks of life. Uh, and we also want to be sensitive uh, to where the Lord has us in time and space and at this current moment. Uh, and so we want to ask um, more, maybe what is your willingness uh, to share uh, the good news of the gospel with those who are different than us? Uh, what's your willingness to be involved in the life uh, of people who think differently than you are? Uh, this could be even your own family. This could be your neighborhood. Uh, this could be across the town. This could be across the globe. Um, so we really want to make sure that, uh, as we're talking about this, we're not letting folks get into a shame spiral because that can easily happen here, uh, feeling like they have to do something uh, when that's not actually what this passage is saying. The passage is saying, look at what God has already done. Look at what Jesus has done. Uh, and as we see that, how does that motivate us and encourage us uh, to do the same? Uh, you're going to see in verse 17, uh, a verse that really will enliven, uh, the hearts of its readers. Uh, and we hope that it would enliven your heart as well as you lead this, uh, that in verse 17, we see this is where God is wiping away the, uh, every tear from the eye uh, of the people who have followed him. This is the martyr's reception that's in heaven. When John looks and says, who are those with their robes dipped in blood, I believe is what he says. Uh, the angel tells him those are those coming out of the great tribulation. So those are the ones who uh, have been martyred for the faith, uh, who are coming to Jesus and Jesus is wiping the tears uh, from their eyes, which is this beautiful picture of just how much Jesus loves uh, suffering. He doesn't love suffering. He loves those who suffer uh, on account of him. Uh, and so uh, as you are going through this passage yourself uh, and looking at um, how does heaven, uh, how is it different than the world in which you live in now uh, concerning those who are in your spheres of influence uh, and and praying really for God to make uh, opportunity for you to share, um, in the lives of others that are perceived differently than you are. Uh, so this is a great passage. Again, um, if you have any questions, please reach out to the pastoral team, reach out to your group's representative at your campus. Uh, we want to help you, uh, 
uh, we want, we think you guys are rock stars. Uh, we want to equip you as best we can. Uh, so carry on. You're doing, you're doing great work.